Hello, Junta viewers. This is Vindian, welcoming you to a new episode of the final series of OOTP 18 with the World Baseball Classic, where we take the United States through attempting to replicate what actually happened in the World Baseball Classic, not the World Cup of Baseball, um, where they uh, managed to get all the way to the finals and finally defeat Japan, who'd actually won the first two World Baseball Classics. Um, as I stated in the little intro episode I did last week, of course, um, they have to call it the World Cup of Baseball because reasons of copyright and registered trademarks. So we're going to be putting together our team. And the very first thing that we're going to decide on is how we want to set up our pitching staff. Now, the World Baseball Classic or the World Cup of Baseball, I'm going to use them interchangeably. It's best to accept it now. Um, it takes place over a fairly short period of time. What this means is we have to have a fairly large rotation. So if we look at, say, Canada. Canada's got a five-man rotation. Um, and that's about what we're looking at. We'd want about a five-man rotation, if not a six-man. All right, so right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and add Chris Archer. Because Chris Archer is the best pitcher we have. <coughs> best starter, I should say. Um, Archer played for the Tampa Bay Double Race. We'll add Michael Fulmer of the Detroit Tigers as our number two pitcher. We shall add... Oh, where is he? Marcus Stroman of the Toronto Blue Jays will be our number three starter. Um, let's focus purely on starters for the moment so I don't get distracted. Um, Danny Duffy, maybe. And then, do I want Hap or do I want Roark? Roark, I think, is... Sl uh, Hap is... Mm. Hap's got better stamina... Roark's got better movement. Oh, their movement's about the same. Actually, it's Hap is the better pick. Okay. Now we set up the rest of the pitching staff. And the most important key to our success is taking huge advantage of one Andrew Miller. So Miller's going to get the stopper role. Um, this is actually kind of the role he has in real life, where he comes in in big situations. Um, and he's also, we're also going to make him high leverage. Our actual closer. Are two, no, I think we we'll actually just make him our closer and just have him come in earlier. Yeah, you can come in an eighth plus or later and in high leverage. And then we want our second best pitcher. Gregerson to be our stopper. <coughs> <clears throat> so these usage patterns assure us that Gregerson and Miller will get the lion's share of innings out of the bullpen. Um, we're going to go ahead and let Dyson and Jones will be set up men. And they'll come in, in the sixth. Where's Dyson? Here's Dyson. Oh no, I'm sorry. I said Dyson was going to be set up, didn't I? <coughs> And Nate Jones of the White Sox set up. So we've got the makings of a very strong bullpen. Uh, the Indians, Andrew Miller, Detroit, uh, Dave Robertson from the White Sox, Sam Dyson from the Rangers, Luke Gregerson from the Astros, and Nate Jones from the White Sox. We still got tons of additional players. And so we'll need to figure out what we want to do with the rest of them. Uh, Tanner Roark is an obvious choice to be our long reliever and emergency starting pitcher. Because he's got good stamina, he's normally a starter, and if someone gets hurt, he'll be able to fill in. Now, we want two lefty specialists. So we'll go ahead and make Jake McGee and Brett Cecil lefty specialists. And the rest of you are going to be middle relief. Um, Drew Smiley is kind of a misnomer. He's actually not going to be playing because he's injured. In fact, 
I'm going to send him to the reserve roster. Because we don't need him. Oh, we have David Robertson too. Um, You can be a middle reliever that we use slightly more often. So, use more often. There we go. Alright, so we've got a bunch of pitchers. We have comparatively fewer lineups. And this is why we're going to need to sit down and decide how we want to work this out. So are the batting ratings. Okay, AJ Ellis has no business being on this team except the fact he's actually a pretty good defensive catcher. So it's between Posey and Luke Roy. Posey of the Giants, Luke Roy of the Rangers at that point. <coughs> no contest, Posey. Goldschmidt, no question. We will take a quick peek and see if there's a dramatic platoon split. Like, is Eric Cosmer brilliant against left-handed hitting? No. He's a really good defensive first baseman, but then again, so is Goldschmidt. We will have a DH, so we'll need to decide what to do with them. Ian Kinsler, Daniel Murphy of the, of the Nationals, clearly seems like the best one because he's got the highest contact. He's got decent power and decent defense. So we'll go ahead and make Daniel Murphy our starting second baseman. Third base is Nolan Arenado. Easy decision. Um, we have Alex Bregman or Brandon Crawford at shortstop. Bregman is a slightly better hitter, but Crawford is the much better shortstop. So we'll go ahead and put Crawford in there. Then we've got Christian Yelich. Is that Andrew Jones? No, Adam Jones. That makes sense. So, we have kind of a weakness here, and that both our center fielders kind of suck. Andrew McCutcheon's a much better hitter, though, so we will happily throw him in there. And then Giancarlo Stanton. So, our first baseman should be someone who's a really good hitter who doesn't already have a spot on the team. Um... As I'm looking over this, I don't really see an obvious hitter who needs a spot. Maybe Adam Jones. Maybe we make Adam Jones and then Eric Ho Yeah. That's, oh, that's brilliant. Eric Hosmer, you're going to be the DH against left-handed, right-handed hitters. And then Andrew Jones will take over against lefties. Oh, right. We're in the DH mode. No, I don't believe there are non-DH uh, teams in the Baseball Classic. So I think we're okay to just go ahead and set the, um, the lineups for just the two. We'll see, but I'm pretty sure they all have designated hitters. So now we need to decide about our backups. Okay, this is pretty obvious. Is it going to be... John Lucroy and then Ellis as the third catcher. <coughs> Josh Harrison backs up there. Kinsler will back up at first. Bregman at short and third. And Andrew Jones at all the positions in the outfit. Adam Jones. I keep calling him Andrew. It's the wrong Jones. Um, Adam Jones will be our number one pinch hitter. Um, Bregman wouldn't be a bad pick. No, we'll do Kinsler, then Harrison, then Lucroy. <coughs> <coughs> You'll notice I'm mostly going by contact because. As sexy as it is to win a game with a walk-off home run, they don't happen all that often, and they're nearly impossible to predict. So it's a smarter play, much smarter play actually, to just go ahead and, uh, and have a good contact hitter. 
Now we need to set up the actual lineup. So let us start by figuring out who our leadoff man should be. The leadoff man should ideally be the best contactor who's also the best at getting on base. Our best contact hitters are Daniel Murphy and Buster Posey, who both have 65 out of 80. Posey's got a much better batting eye and reasonable speed. So right off the bat, oh, excuse me, right off the bat, we're going to go non-traditional. Buster Posey is our leadoff hitter. Our number two hitter will be Daniel Murphy. And then I think Paul uh, Paul Goldschmidt is number three. Yeah, Goldschmidt is three because he's got a good combination of contact and outstanding power. After Goldschmidt comes Stanton. After Stanton comes Arenado. Um, any other really good contactors? We're going to make sure they end up toward the top. <coughs> uh, Andrew McCutcheon will hit sixth, then Yelich, then Crawford. No, sorry, Hosmer, then Crawford. And we'll go and copy over this lineup, and then we'll come over here and paste it. Oh, we need to grab the depth chart, too. And don't forget, I don't think I've forgotten, because I haven't. I will go ahead and make Adam Jones our primary designated hitter here. And then Eric Hosmer will fill in at first. I think Ian Kinsler's got a bit of outfield experience, so we can throw him there to the Wolves. Just have to hope people don't get injured. So that's our lineup. Um, I will actually bump Adam Jones up one. No, actually, I'll leave him where he is. So now let's take a look at the team home screen and just kind of drink in this lineup that we've got. But it won't be easy because let's look at Canada. Now, Canada has um, a little bit less raw talent. They've got one outstanding position player in Freddie Freeman and one who might someday be outstanding in Tyler O'Neill, who in real life plays for the Arkansas Travelers, a Seattle Mariners affiliate. But where Canada maybe lacks in hitting power, it's also got garbage pitching. Holy shit. Here I was thinking Canada would be like a real threat to us and they're clearly not going to be. Hmm. Shows what I know. So what we're going to use, we're going to go and we're going to sim just the first day for now. And then... I want to play versus Canada, but I don't want to do the 3D. Nah, I don't want to do that right now. We'll save that for more important stuff here. So we're going to finish the day, and we beat Canada. We beat them four to nothing. Chris Archer did his job. Very nice work. Um, filled in nicely with Luke Gregerson and Nate Jones. Um, Daniel Murphy hit a home run, and Brandon Crawford got a double. So a good start. Could have been better. We did allow eight base hits. <coughs> But it's only eight base hits. Now let's see the Dominican Republic. I bet they're going to be scary. What do we got? The Dominican Republic. This is a much better team. This team is one to be concerned about. <coughs> I mean, look at this lineup. 
They're weak at catcher, especially compared to us. But they've got Carlos Santana, Robinson Cano, Manny Machado, um, Juan Segura, Nelson Cruz, Sterling Marte, Starling Marte, sorry, Jose Bautista, Gregory Polanco. This is a hell of a lineup. It's hard to argue with this. And their pitching staff is almost as good as... <coughs> <coughs> Hours. My God, this will be the only video I record tonight. My cough is getting a little out of hand. Um, so this will actually be a tough one for us. I'm curious to see how we deal with this. Oh, there's some trades that happened. Cleveland traded Abraham Almonte for Koji Uhara. That's, that's a thing that happened. We'll finish today. We beat the Dominicans, too. We're number one in our group. We're having a lot of luck pitching. I mean, giving up seven hits, you'd expect to have more than two runs. But we just lit up Johnny Cuto. Ah, oh, Paul Goldschmidt. Two homers. He took this game over. Three walks for Giancarlo Stanton. That's unusual for him. He's normally not known for his ability to draw walks. <coughs> 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 Look, as recently as 2015, you only had 34 walks all season. That's kind of crappy, actually. Hmm. So far, so good. And then Colombia. Who they trade? Carlos Santana for Gio Gonzalez. Okay. All right. Um... How do we do Colombia? We need extra innings to beat Colombia. Paul Goldschmidt came through again with another homer. He's clearly been our tournament MVP so far. The rest of the lineup's not hitting that great. Stanton is doing well. And Goldschmidt's doing well. But both Posey and Murphy are really struggling. Thankfully, Marcus Stroman gave us eight innings of quality pitching. And Andrew Miller came in for a save. So that didn't work out as well as we thought it did, did we? Okay. Tournament round ends. So the playoffs were Japan, South Korea, Cuba, and Israel. Dominican Republic, Venezuela, the United States, and Puerto Rico. So what the game does is it creates new pools now. Um... We were the only team to go undefeated, which is really cool. Expanded standings. Oh, I see how they'll do it. They'll probably do it as a playoff tree. Yeah. Okay, so we have a round-robin semifinal round. And what'll happen is um, each team will play each other team. Um, and then the winner of this will get to go on... To the semifinals. But first we need to determine positioning. So I believe the top four teams will make it. And we've got a tough group. We already talked about how tough the Dominicans are. We've also got Venezuela and Puerto Rico. So let's look at both of our opposing teams. Venezuela's a bit more on the down low than some of these teams. But they've got some real talent. You've got Jose Altuve. You've got Miguel Cabrera. Carlos Gonzalez, Odubel Herrera. Okay, maybe he's not so great. Salvador Perez. Uh, Rugnid Odor. Very good group. And then we've got the pitching. And the pitching is a little bit weaker. I mean, it's led by Felix Hernandez, which is amazeballs. And Martin Perez is okay. But Eduardo Rodriguez is kind of junk. Now, we know our starters are only going to play three games, so it's important to us to make sure that we get the most out of them. Puerto Rico has Francisco Lindor. Damn it. Oh, I love him so much, but he's our enemy. Yadier Molina, Carlos Correa. It's almost unfair that they've got two shortstops of this caliber. Beltron. 
I don't think Puerto Rico's much for pitching, though. Yeah, you've got one really good... Yeah, you've actually got kind of junk for starters. So that's that's their weakness. Let's look at our team and see what we could do, if anything, to improve our chances. Oh, just automatically default to three-man rotation. Okay. Why would we not have Fulmer? <coughs> As one of our starters. I mean, he's not a mind blown, but he's got really good stamina. Maybe we'll just leave it like this. And we'll sim up to Puerto Rico Day. I don't care. God damn it, shut up. I know the problem. Managers. You control all there is to control about minor leagues. There we go. So we'll play. Oh, sorry. We start with today against Puerto Rico. Let's finish. Ooh, our first loss. Mm. We got beat. Jorge Bar uh, Jose Barrios put together a really decent start. And they've got a good bullpen. Giancarlo Stanton got us a homer, but that was all we had in terms of offense. That's problematic. Now we play Venezuela. Oh, we gotta face Felix Hernandez. Archer, you gotta help us out here, mate. Damn. This is really bad. So we got our brains hammered. We just got shelled. Come on, Marcus Stroman. And here's a really bad news. We're in re we're real close to getting bumped. We are real close to getting bumped. Yeah, cuz if you win 3 games, you're in guaranteed. Okay, so we got to hope that Puerto Rico loses. All right. We might actually already be eliminated. Damn. That's some rough shit. We didn't even make it to the second round. We just got obliterated. Mm. But fortunately, this is why we cheat. <coughs> We're going to turn on commissioner mode. Bam. There we go. All right, so we're, what we're going to do before the next one, we're going to sit and look at the semifinals, and we're going to pick who we think should be the next round. Oh, I can't not play as Francisco Lindor's team. Oh, no, never mind. That's Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico versus Japan. That's a baseball matchup. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we just quickly pop over here. Hey, look, we're Puerto Rico now. What are you talking about? Um, so that'll be our next episode. Um, and for these last two games, we'll actually be playing them live. So you'll get the full 3D joy of us playing the Puerto Ricans versus the Japanese. And then we will face the winner of Venezuela versus South Korea. South Korea, a bit of an unknown team. Let's take a quick peek at the South Korean team before we go. Um, El Correo de South. Because the only famous South Korean player in the Major Leagues is Shin Soo Chu. There's also this kid. 
El Ju El Jui Yang. Okay. There's Hisop Choi. Oh, that's Hyung Wu Choi. Okay. Wow, you didn't have the famous South Korean guy. Now. I wonder how you guys have done so well. Huh. Curious. Did they just have a lucky group? Maybe they had a lucky group. Yeah, they had Israel, Korea, and Taipei. And none of these teams are, to be perfectly blunt with you, terribly thrilling. It actually makes total sense. I can't believe we got shut out entirely in the second round. That's some bullshit. Huh. Well, what we're going to do next time is we're going to play more baseball. No. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to play the semifinal game and then we'll play the championship game. And at the end of the championship game, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about OTP 18 as in general, which I hope you find entertaining. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have. Please like and subscribe. Only two episodes of Out of the Park Baseball 18 left. But until next time, this has been Avindian. And I bid you good day.